Second, uh, every primary must be optimized separately. A lot, there's a lot of protocols out there, and, and I can't tell you how many times I talk to customers who are using a protocol that they've just always used with every antibody. And I'm here to tell you, you definitely don't want to do that because every antibody is a little bit different. There's even differences between lot to lot uh, variability from a supplier. So you definitely want to optimize the fixation time and what fixative you want to use and the time for it. Very much the concentration or dilution of your antibody. Do you want one microgram per mil or five or 10 micrograms per mil on your sample? You usually want to try a range of different concentrations. Also incubation times. It's not uncommon to do 30 minutes or an hour incubation time with your primary antibody on cells, maybe uh, several hours for tissue or even overnight at four degrees, which is best for your antibody of interest. Often there's recommendations from your commercial source, but you want to test it on your own. Don't just go with what they recommend, because every assay is different, every sample is different. And though we validate our antibodies carefully, we can't always predict what your sample will need. And finally, a blocking solution, too. I, mean, I'll, I mentioned different blocking solutions. Uh, not every block is the same for every antibody. I won't go into antigen retrieval much, but just realize that if there's a, a chance that your antigen binding site has been masked, for instance, by your fixative, sometimes you can treat your samples with heat or pressure or certain um, buffer components to unmask those binding sites. There's a lot of different protocols out there for antigen retrieval and some good review papers. Most antibodies don't need it and sometimes your commercial source will tell you. On the right here, you can see an example where I've used too much antibody to label this tubulin um, sample, and it's caused a loss of resolution and oversaturation using a 20 microgram per mil. This is with our antitubulin, alpha antitubulin, detected with a mouse antitubulin, um, and then a secondary with Alexafluor 555. On the right-hand side, you can see where I've used five micrograms per mil, which was right for this sample, and you can see some very good detail there. If your antibody is too old or stored improperly, it can degrade over time, leading to precipitants in the tube or nonspecific binding in your samples. Here in the top, you can see some examples of cells that weren't so great. On the upper left, this was that Golgi image I showed earlier. A lot of speckles off cell, a lot of speckles on cell, nonspecific binding that the blocking couldn't block. If you use a, uh, a, a new antibody, in this case anti-Golgi 97, you get nice specific Golgi labeling. On the upper right, you can see a tubulin antibody that's degraded, giving the, you the sort of pearls on a string appearance to the tubulin. But a new one, you get very nice features like down below it. Remember, quality primaries means you get a quality labeling of your antigen. Very important. And I often have people call in here to tech support asking if their lot is a recent one. Maybe they forgot to put the date on the vial. So it's good to check that. 